In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Touchphone 200 in the rare beige colour. And this one has been slightly sun affected, so that's the original colour under there. One side of the handset a bit darker than the other, that's not too bad. But I'm going to retrobrite this thing and try and make it just ever so slightly better. It's not the easiest thing to do when they've got multiple amounts of colour change on them. I think that bit's reasonably good. Wall bracket's probably a bit better. So it's actually got, they made a wall mount kit. You've got the little piece that presses in there to hold the handset up. And you've got the wall mounting bracket itself. And they've actually made them in the same colour. These were sold by Dick Smith and Tandy in I think sort of early to mid 90s. And it's made by Alcatel. Manufactured and designed in Australia. Manufactured for telecom technologies. That's how you know it's a sale phone, not a rental one. It's got this 008 number on it. It's a TF200. Originally got the Austel permit in 89. So it's sort of based on the phones from way back then. Yeah, this was the other part of the wall mount kit. Little short cable to go to. This just mounted. You can see the screw holes mounted on the wall plate modular type wall plate I might have one somewhere yeah it would have been something like this Exicom yeah with Telstra thing so that basically fits on these two metal or plastic tabs one's missing on this one but yeah just slots on like that cord in and phone on and you can see that's quite a bit lighter that bit than that and even the wall bracket has changed colour quite a bit more than I would have thought so it's paler on the inside than the outside and yeah that is quite a light colour it wasn't kind of even though you could see it on there I wasn't expecting it to be quite that light so they came in white was just 99% of them are white now the ones sold by Dick Smith and Tandy were white beige and grey yet to see a grey one they probably look pretty horrible I think there's pictures in their catalogue I doubt anyone would have willingly paid for a grey telephone. They used to be popular with the old dial phones for like, business use for some reason. I guess they looked a bit more conservative or austere or whatever. Businesses seem to like the horrible grey ones, but not normally a home phone colour. Cord on that's not the best, and unfortunately that's moulded into the... or clamped into the handset. So I won't be trying to pull that to bits. But we'll get this thing apart and it looks like the wall mount also needs a bit of a brightening up the big problem with brightening these up is it will lighten the bits that haven't been sun affected to a degree but luckily it seems to lighten the darker bits up quicker than the, the lighter bits so that must be that product information line same thing as on the back which was on the sale phones it's got touch phone 200 it's still got the telecom symbol on it Yeah, manufactured for telecom technology, so it's not Telstra at that stage. I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly what year they changed, but again, somewhere around the mid 90s. So when was this made? It's got 91 pointing at seven, so I don't know, it could be that early. Because I think Dick Smith and that, it's the sort of around the 91, 92 catalog and Tandy, that they start listing these, so this is quite early. They did make a red version of these phones as well, which I'm not sure, I think it was used in lifts or by wormholds I've heard for like fire emergency or something. Maybe, I think they might have done lifts as well. So maybe it was wormhold lifts or something, but they did make them in a red case. Supposedly there were some other random color ones made by people that worked there or something. Didn't bother with the handset switch. I guess at least it makes it stand out a bit and easier to see being in grey still oh this has got the later screw in most of these at this era did not screw the I think it was my touch phone 400 so screwed the ringer piezo in yeah, interesting there's so many varieties of these phones it's ridiculous would be just a standard board in here I assume what features did it have just depending on what model of phone you've got different switches I've got ring of pitch ring of volume there 
and 600 ohm normal tone tone and decadic tone 100 milliseconds tone 600 milliseconds We've got another little thing here so if it's 91 seventh month we got one two three four five are the only options not sure what that is but yeah they did make a few of these rarer ones and yeah i don't think they ever sold a lot of them they're around a hundred dollars to buy and you could buy lots of aftermarket phones often with more features for that sort of money or cheaper but yeah i was lucky to pick this one up because they are very rare in this color i don't think tandy or dick smith ever sold a lot of them and again it's not the nicest color on earth but it's certainly better than the plain white ones all the time and yeah, again you can see the shade difference that's quite a bit darker than that bit that bit so i'll just put all these back together roughly and put it in the hydrogen peroxide we're running out of decent summer weather which the hotter and sunnier it seems the better it works of course the heat actually seems to help but this luckily doesn't need much and my hydrogen peroxide has done quite a bit of stuff now so it's not the best condition anyway I guess what we can do is either protect the other way around. I guess we can protect the back of this phone somewhat from the sun by putting that back on it. The peroxide does sometimes seem to corrode these screws a little bit, but generally it doesn't do a lot. A lot of scratching there, so I don't know what someone's saying there. It's like someone's had this on and off something a million times which is weird, maybe they swapped it between desk and wall mount a lot may have been used in business or something, that's where most of them seem to have survived and I almost wonder if I don't put the handset back like that because I'm going to have to drown the handset I think it's got quite a bit of dirt on it, I should probably clean a bit of off and some scratches, but yeah I wonder if I just cover that up let the sun get to what it can and hopefully that'll protect those lighter bits there's only that bit there but that doesn't really matter because it's under a cover anyway and that might do the job and yes yeah, a real shame that this is one handset i might have to perfect the splitting open of but i think it's a bit too risky if you damage this thing it'll probably be worthless whereas it's actually probably worth 100 to 200 dollars in the condition it's in the red ones go for about 200 dollars on ebay this one's probably even rarer than the red ones in some ways i've seen quite a few red ones for sale maybe five or six which is not an enormous amount i know somebody has got a red one but yeah this is quite a rare thing so i better look after it but we'll get that in the solution and see what it comes up like okay so got this phone back together after retro brining it i wasn't going to really do much more it is slightly out somewhere still Bit hard to see it's so fine but i think it's slightly darker along here somewhere possibly that bit's ever so slightly darker and the handset may be just ever so slightly lighter and a bit darker on the underside it's very hard to get it 100 percent consistent when they've sort of got dark and lighter patches but that came up pretty good it does have a few little light scratches and stuff on this thing the more you look at it the more you realize it's certainly not mint condition but it's cleaned up rather nicely it looks its proper color again we're back to like the lighter color underneath actually what's well, this thing i think is what it is i knew it was a darker patch somewhere. it was actually just this yeah it's just that strip along there not the actual phone itself of course that was covered up so i could try doing this a little bit more just along that strip or even just soaking that bit in the solution or something so just a wall mount but i don't think it's worth really doing any more with it i've cleaned up the main foam body but one thing i've got to do is try and fix this cord a bit now usually these you can just i can't remember if i showed it before but you can wind these little knots out of these things that one's you get these kind of straight sections and it's really just a matter of winding it round by hand and trying to sort of unwind the original knotty bit so it's starting to come straight and oh, we've got another one here of course God, this this one's had plenty of use i think 
doesn't actually fix that. I think it has. It's a little bit out of shape now. But that's what you tend to get. It's good if you can have the end of the one end of the lead sort of loose so that you can wind it right round. And that should allow the, the knots to completely basically move to the end type of thing in the end. So that's a little bit tight there. It's just a matter of sort of winding the thing as you go and walking it down the, the cord because after years and years of being twisted around these things just start appearing in them and obviously people have twisted the handset around and stuff over the years and never sort of undone all the twists it ends up memorizing some of them and yeah, unfortunately on this hand said, oh, this actually, you must have met another one because it's, that's fix it without having to wind anything right to the end. Is that bit right? Yeah, it's all good. You can actually clean up the cord a bit too. But that one's not too bad on the inside. So I can plug that back in, plug our line back in. Even though that probably won't be used again. Since it's got a wall mount kit with it, I don't want to separate it since it's a special coloured one. Most of these phones I've just pulled them off and undone the clip while I had it apart. So that the handset clip to stop it falling off when it's on the wall. Best taken off from the inside, very hard to get them off from the outside, these little clips without breaking them because they go in and spread apart. So you really need to do it from inside the phone. And we're already starting to tangle this up again. dirt on it from around the place so it's just a matter then of putting this on it goes kind of the opposite way to what you think it's thicker at the base you can see where the volume control goes and there's a couple of little lugs at the top there and one screw that's a couple of marks on this thing probably want a bit of method or something to get them off Yeah, a couple of marks there. I did have a cotton bud here. There's some metal gone. Sometimes a bit of methylated spirit. That's just a bit of muck. We'll get these sort of bits of possibly paint or something that's scuffed on it. They're just loose bits. It's nice to get every last little bit off it. So it looks as close to new as possible. There's a bit of dirt along that little mold mark there I guess a little seam where the phone was molded looks a lot better without that on there and yeah just a bit darker along this edge but not the end of the world and yeah quite a bit of scratches on this like I said looks like someone's had it on and off a wall mount many many times and rather roughly they scratched the screw right across it if that's what it was so it looks like it got quite a bit of use possibly a business phone or something three four numbers so it was somewhere in hobart this was used but i've yet to see one of these for sale on ebay the red ones like i say i think i've seen five or six of those maybe more and I know of other ones that are around the place that local collectors have. I'll just tuck that inside for now. But this colour, yes, very rare it seems. But that's looking a lot better. I'm happy with that now that it didn't doesn't have that sort of darker tint to it than it should have. It's back to its proper colour. It's always nice to get them just right. And yeah, a few scratches on the handset could really do with a bit of a polishes thing. And then a proper buff up and stuff. I don't really have the gear for doing that, so for my collection, it'll do the job. And this message waiting one I've had in, I think, over about three days with the sun's not as strong and not as hot as it was. And the annoying thing about this one is I can still see, I may give up doing any more to it, but I can still make out where there was a label there. Probably if I forgot that there was a label there, I wouldn't even notice it. It's just now that I know there's a patch there, but it shows the whole thing. I don't think the handset's as white as it should be either. 
that's probably gonna need a bit of metho on it. So I'm pretty sure this handset needs a little bit more. I keep finding other phones that need doing it. I thought these were the last ones. And I finally found I had another one with the extender module or whatever they call it on it. I knew there was another one somewhere, but it's not hands-free, it's, I forget what it is. I'll have to dig it out and then we'll have a look at that one because that's one of the next ones I need to pull to bits. To do, and that'll be it hopefully. But yeah, that's, it's not too bad, but it's not 100%, bit of glue or something on there. Label, sticky stuff or whatever. Yeah, that's definitely a bit yellower than the inside part of it, which is usually an indicator it's not right because its own inside will be slightly different colour. Yeah, and this outer part's all slightly yellow. I think one of the ones I did with this message waiting or something on it, it did lose a bit of grey off the telecom print on there, but most of them seem to be done with good ink or paint or they maybe they've got some sort of coating on them don't think they really do but the screen printing thing is usually pretty good on these phones very resilient they did it well so even the hydrogen peroxide and the bleaching process doesn't worry them i could probably get away with that but i might give that another day in the sun i think because it's been very stubborn this one sometimes they go really well and for some reason some of these white phones you think you could bleach them Nicely, because they're white, you don't have to worry about preserving the colour or anything, but sometimes they just don't seem to want to go. And yeah, it's ruined a few of these labels, not surprisingly. And we've got a warranty into 96 and more gluey stuff. It's just amazing the stuff these have all over them. And I did find a Pursuit phone, which is another early telecom phone well, not that early I guess but from the 80s quite an old one now and that's somewhat yellow so I might pull that to bits as well and they might be the last couple I do plus maybe give this a bit longer but at least we've got the I forget what color it even was now beige I think they called it at least we've got the beige one back that's looking pretty good not my ideal color for a phone but since it's such a rare one it's definitely worth getting that just back to its natural color that it's meant to have and even that bit looks maybe slight oh is that that's just the camera putting a shadow on it i think actually yeah i think that side's all right it's just this one you can notice a slight difference but yeah certainly a bit of a different color and like i said i would be really interested to find a gray one of these because I can't imagine grey was much of a popular colour. I think the I've got one somewhere. The Executive Touch Phone is it an Executive Two Touch Phone Two Hundred or whatever it is? But they made an Executive version with the LCD display and a whole bunch of extra memory buttons. They came out in a grey, and I think most of them are a grey colour. So maybe it's like a sort of yeah, not and it doesn't look that different to the white. It's just a, a bit more grey. It's not like the old phones which are really grey colour. So maybe it was just a slight more of an off-white, darker white kind of thing. I think in the catalogue, the pictures of these, it does look rather great. And I've still got some dirt in the side of this handset. I thought I'd got all that, but it can be a real pain getting all the dirt out of these slots. But anyway, that'll do for that video, so thanks for watching.